Now, let's continue our broken access control discussion. This time, we will talk about preventing IDOR attacks. Take note, preventing a more advanced broken access control vulnerability is not covered in this video. We will also introduce the advantage of using web application firewall over other IDOR web attacks prevention. And lastly, we will do some lab demonstration. For those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, name is Dean Armada, and I'm the internet. Action Star. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. Despite being the number one in OWASP vulnerability list, preventing broken access control or IDOR is very simple. Basically, we just need two things. First, the web application checks the user identity and permission before the user access the specific resource or page. For example, the application or the web application must check first if the user session cookies corresponds to the user ID before the application grants access to that requested resources. Second, the web application can also use an unpredictable keys or hash identifier and reference it to the user's resources. So what is hashing? Hashing is a one-way process in which translate this long value to a string. And this hash value consists of user ID, secret keys with secured algorithm. And this would make the attacker's life a little harder. It would be extremely difficult for him to guess such a long random value. So here is the question. What if you have this web application that is vulnerable to IDOR and it's using an old insecure framework and there are too many complex code with complex web server configuration on multiple web servers? I don't think you want to change all of the codes and all of the web server configuration. It's just too much. Would it be good if you centralize the web security protection, configuration and management instead of changing everything, code, server configuration, etc.? This is where the web application firewall comes in. It's policy-based, signature-based, and it's intelligent at its automatically enabled signatures based on specific system, framework, and programming languages. We added an appliance in our topology. There is now an F5 web application firewall between the attacker and the target web server. From the attacker, we will test IDOR towards the web server. So, the most common URL structure is using HTTP GET parameter, such as this. But our blog web application is using URL path parameter, like this one. If we're gonna use option A, we would be using dynamic parameter configuration in our F5 security policy. And basically, what it would do is it will map the user ID value to the session cookie when the user logged in. If the user ID value has been changed, the web application firewall will detect an attack as an invalid parameter signature. But since we're using option B, the URL path parameter, we will be using a different approach. I'm here in my F5 configuration utility, specifically to the application security page. I already created a security policy with the name of IDOR prevention and is already associated to our virtual server sticks underscore vs. Now let's go to the attacker hosts slash Kali Linux and uh, what I'm gonna do is I will log in. So I'm gonna click sign in button here and I will log in as Haction Star. So I'll enter my username and password. I'm gonna click sign in. Now let's go to the change password page. So I'm going to click change password. And as you can see, this is the page where we can change the password of our logged in user, Action Star. 
I will append the URL with slash 10. Okay, and now we are allowed to change a different user's password, Dean underscore Armada. Next is I will change it to slash 30. As you can see, we are allowed to access these pages where we can change the password of these users. Now we'll go to the F5 web application firewall and show you the policy. So I will click this and as you can see here at allowed URL list, we just added only the valid URL path. Okay, uh, these are slash slash blog slash three slash change slash password slash login slash logout. Okay, and everything else are denied. This is considered positive security logic. Now let's enable blocking a specific signature. So what I will do is I will go back to this page and I will click view learning and blocking settings. And in this page, I will look for a specific violation. So I will click URL and there's this violation named illegal URL. As you can see by default, learn alarm block is not enabled. So I will not only enable block, but I will also enable learn and alarm. And uh, I will save this configuration. And I will also apply the save configuration to our policy, IDOR underscore prevention. Now let's test again. We'll go to our Kali Linux. And what I'm gonna do is I will log out or sign out and then log back in as action star. I'll enter both username and password and then I'll click log in. Okay. And uh, I can also go to other pages such as the blog page. And as you can see, it's verified that the web application is still working. Now, if I click change password, it's still working. But when I change the URL, I will append it with slash 10. As you can see, it is rejected. Now, let's try again. We'll change it to slash 30. It's rejected again. Now, this proves that our security policy is working. Next is, let's go to the event logs. So I'm going to click this tab. And as you can see, the event log page is still empty. I will just refresh it. So I will click application, then request. As you can see, we have multiple log events, but we're interested on this too because of this icon. Okay, so it means that this request are blocked. So as you can see, the violation is illegal URL. The URL is uh, change underscore change dash password slash 10. So this is the first attempt. The second attempt is change dash password slash 30. Again, the violation is illegal URL. If I click this illegal URL link, it shows us the details. So the severity is error. The attack type is forceful browsing and the type is access violation because IDOR is also called broken access control. Another reason why we want to use Web Application Firewall or WAF instead of traditional IDOR protection is, it's not just IDOR that we want to protect our web applications from. There are dozens of web attacks out there. Would it be easier and more effective protecting against those attacks using a dedicated appliance such as Web Application Firewall or WAF? So that's how we prevent basic IDOR using F5 Web Application Firewall. We can also use other solutions such as Akamai, Imperva, and many others. Here is the question. Can we bypass IDOR protection? We will talk about it in another video.